Hello, my name is Abby Heber, and for this week's discussion, I'm looking into the court case known as the Scopes Trial as it pertains to the fundamentalist modernist controversy. So to begin, the fundamentalist modernist controversy arose from a broader struggle between traditional Christian values and modern scientific theories. The controversy occurred in the 19th and 20th centuries. It concerned how individuals interpreted the Bible and how these sacred beliefs came up against secular literature or scientific discoveries and modern knowledge. In his 1931 book, The History of Fundamentalism, Stuart G. Cole investigates the conflict across these denominations, and he noticed that consistently conservatives directed their energies to gain control of Protestant Christianity for the purpose of reinstating Christian orthodoxy. Some major events that occurred during this time, and one that this discussion is going to concern itself with, is the 1925 case known as the Scopes Trial, or also known as the Monkey Trial. The Scopes Trial epitomized the fundamentalist modernist controversy. The trial's effects extended and rippled far across and beyond the Tennessee courtroom in which it was held. The Scopes Trial was sparked by the passage of the Butler Act in Tennessee, which prohibited the teaching of evolution in public schools. John T. Scopes was a very unassuming high school teacher who was really just a sub for biology. He was charged with violating the law by teaching evolution. On the creationist side stood William Jennings Bryan, a fundamentalist and three-time presidential candidate who argued that evolution was the direct challenge to the Bible's teachings and its morals. And opposing him was Clarence Darrow, a leading modernist and defense attorney who contended that evolution was a well-supported scientific theory and it should be taught alongside other ideas to foster critical thinking. The trial quickly became a national spectacle, drawing attention from prominent figures and media outlets. This led to many newspapers publishing the controversial event. Some of these include the Washington Post, The Sun, Casper Daily Tribune, and The Daily Worker, just to name a few. All this media coverage, which included live radio broadcasts and newspaper reports, portrayed the trial as a battle between outdated religious dogma and progressive scientific thought, or at least that's the narrative that was cast. This portrayal helped cement the image of fundamentalists as opposed to modernity and science, while modernists were seen as champions of intellectual freedom and progress. At the trial's conclusion, Scopes was found guilty but was subsequently acquitted by the Tennessee Supreme Court on a technicality. The guilty sentencing did not, however, immediately overturn the Butler Act or end debates over evolution in schools. It's important to note that the Scopes trial, though impactful to the fundamentalist modernist controversy, was not exactly as the media made it appear to be. In the journal article, The Scopes Monkey Trial, 80 years later, David Minton remarks how the trial has been misinterpreted over the years. Minton states, The newscasters and editorialists will be all of us about the Scopes trial this week, on the 80th anniversary of America's most famous court trial. As usual, most will spin the story in a way that will cast a bad light on biblical Christianity and make the trial out to be a triumph of science evolutionism or religious fundamentalism, creationism. But the trial had little to do with empirical science and much to do with religion. Minton concludes his article by urging readers to watch the documentary on the case titled Inherently Wind, a Hollywood History of the Scopes Trial. This documentary is a response to, in Minton's words, a propaganda piece, Inherit the Wind, which has continued to deceive a whole generation with its countless distortions and inaccuracies. Even now, as we approach the centennial of Scopes trial and the details of the case become a little clearer, the polarization of American culture between sacred traditional fundamentalism and scientific theory is still hotly contested. However strong the tension between creationism and evolutionism is, this court case could be viewed, and I believe should be viewed, as a conduit in how cultural and intellectual conflicts help spark national discourse. I've enjoyed reading up on the fundamentalist modernist controversy, in particular the Scopes trial and how it impacted the controversy, and I look forward to hearing and viewing all of your discussion posts. So thank you for listening.